Many of you have spent months, years, and even decades learning grammar, vocabulary, and phrases. And many of you may even know more English than the average American, at least when it comes to grammar. For example, what's the correct spelling for the word that begins this sentence? Write your answer in the comments. Nonetheless, if you're watching this video, you probably do understand English quite well. But there's a problem. You understand English, but you can't speak. Luckily, research has identified two main reasons why this problem exists and five solutions you can start using today. Hi, my name is Cal, and I have been an English university instructor for almost 20 years. And today, we will uncover why so many English speakers just like you understand English, but have trouble speaking English. But you may ask the question, okay, then what can I do about it? Well, I will show you the five steps research shows that are required to change this. But before we get to the solutions, consider what percentage of time do you spend on the following? Reading in English, listening in English, writing in English, and speaking in English. Are your numbers close to this? The key here is to understand the difference between passive learning and active learning. Passive learning involves receiving information or input without necessarily producing language output. That's listening and reading. On the other hand, active learning requires learners to participate and engage in producing the language. That's writing and speaking, especially speaking. You struggle with speaking because you haven't spent the right percentage on active learning. How often do you practice speaking English? Research finds that too much time spent passively listening, reading, and studying English is a major factor holding you back from improving your English speaking skills. But that's just one piece of the puzzle. Research has also identified something else that holds people back from reaching English fluency. And it's more of a feeling, not an action. It's that feeling people have when it's their turn to speak. I'm a big fan of the film Dune, the original 1984 film. And a quote from that movie has always stuck with me. It goes something like this. Fear is the mind killer. And to me, fear is the enemy. Of course, you may not be able to control the feeling of fear, but you do have the ability to control what you do with that fear and how you react to that fear. The fear of making mistakes plus a lack of confidence prevents fluency in two ways. They limit the amount of time you practice speaking with others in English, and they make it difficult to recall the words and phrases you want to use when speaking. And getting over fear does take some effort and time, but it may be easier than you think, just as we are about to see. Imagine you're standing at the base of a mountain intending to reach its peak. You understand the path ahead, but the climb seems overwhelming. Similarly, many English learners are in the same situation. There's a mountain to climb to reach English fluency. However, there are five powerful methods that act as guide ropes propelling you forward. Each method presents a crucial step in your ascent upward, promising growth and clarity in your communication. So stick with me for all five methods to better equip you for this journey up this language mountain. Imagine yourself again as a mountain climber scaling a challenging peak. Each step upward brings you closer to conquering the summit. Similarly, when speaking English, every grammar mistake that you make and every tumble over words, it's a necessary step forward on your journey to fluency. Instead of viewing mistakes as obstacles blocking your path forward, recognize them for what they really are, essential steps for progress. The real purpose of language is not perfection, but communication. Even with mistakes, you can share ideas, 
and connect with others. And that's what makes communication special. And keep this in mind, most Americans only know one language. You know at least two, and I would be really proud of that. There's another part of that quote from Dune I mentioned earlier. The last part of that quote is this, I will face my fear and I will permit it to pass over me and through me. Let your fear of speaking do the same thing. I know that you can overcome this major milestone, but there are a few more steps to take. Now that you've ascended the first ridge of your language mountain, four more ridges remain. Just as a climber uses gear for each leg of the journey, you too must use the right tools for language ascent. Essentially, you need to know the right words and phrases for conversation. Although you don't need the best words to have a good conversation, you do want to make a continued effort to increase your overall vocabulary. So make it a daily ritual to learn new words and new phrases. Continue reading in English, watching shows in English, listening to podcasts in English, and writing all of this down. It's these day-to-day -day habits that strengthen your language skills for the challenges that lie ahead. But having a strong vocabulary is just the beginning. Using them correctly is equally crucial, and that's the third ascent to this journey. The third section of our climb is not just how well you sound, but also how well you convey meaning and connect with others. As you listen to how native speakers pronounce words and phrases, you start adapting your own skills when speaking, and you can speed up that learning by mimicking people's pronunciation. Here, you want to copy someone's pronunciation, intonation, and way of speaking as best you can. What do you listen to most? A TV show, a movie, a podcast, a YouTube channel? Choose one and immerse yourself in it. Practice copying the rising tones of questions and the fall of statements. Practice areas of intonation and exaggeration. Even practice facial expressions and gestures. Congratulations, fellow climber. You've reached the halfway part of our ascent up the language mountain. But remember, the ultimate peak of this language climb is the ability to speak more fluently. So, what steps can you take to bridge the gap between understanding and confident speaking? The path to fluency requires consistent effort, especially if you don't have the opportunity to practice speaking with a native speaker. Since you're watching this video, I'm guessing that this is the case with you, right? You want to practice speaking, but you just don't have anyone to practice with. Don't let that be an excuse. The truth is you have to practice speaking, so you have to find an alternative. And one of the top recommendations is that you self-talk. Yes, that's talking to yourself. Self-talking works. Simply narrate your daily activities or your thoughts to yourself. Describe what you're doing, what you see, or what you plan to do next. This helps you practice forming sentences and expressing yourself in English. Use your smartphone to record yourself speaking. Then listen to your recording and do a self-evaluation of your pronunciation, intonation, and clarity. This can help you identify areas for improvement and help you track your progress over time. Give it a try for at least one week. You may be surprised at how well it works. Don't let not having a language partner be an excuse anymore. Become your own language partner. But all of this advice is worth little if you don't have one last thing to get you to the top. Just like a climber mapping out their route to the peak, clear objectives guide you on your journey to fluency. You need to have a clear direction that allows you to measure your progress and stay focused. Because 
If you really want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. Start by setting a goal of speaking out loud without hesitation for at least 30 seconds. Then gradually increase the duration over time. This challenge builds confidence and fluency in your speech. Here are three conversational topics to kickstart your conversational practice. Describe your favorite holiday destination. Paint a vivid picture of a place you love to visit, sharing details that make it special to you. Talk about a memorable meal. Describe a delicious dish you've enjoyed recently, including flavors, aromas, and the experience of eating it. Discuss your dream job. Share your aspirations and why this particular career path excites you. And the icing on the cake is to celebrate each achievement along the way, whether it's speaking for 30 seconds or three minutes. You have incredible potential on your journey to English fluency. With dedication and a positive mindset, you can unlock countless opportunities for personal and professional growth. Just keep it up. But to get there a little faster, make sure you watch this video here and continue on your path to improvement.